Good evening, and welcome to Full Moon Matinee. I'm your host, The Detective, bringing you the finest crime dramas and film noir from the golden age of Hollywood. Tonight's picture is from 1951, The Mob, starring Broderick Crawford, Betty Bueller, and Richard Kiley, and it features a small role being played by Ernest Borgnine. Now this picture was quite successful at the box office when it came out and it was very well received by the critics. It grossed over a million dollars. Now that doesn't sound like a lot today, but for this era, let's remember, this was a time when the average ticket price was still less than 50 cents and the population of the country was much smaller then than it is today. In fact, uh, as an example, when it played at the Paramount Theater in Manhattan, it was the second highest box office for 1951. It was just behind Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis, who had made multiple appearances to the theater to promote their movie, That's My Boy. And Broderick Crawford, he did a lot to promote tonight's picture as well. He did a 60-city tour in three months, and he also used the then-ascending medium of television to help promote the picture. Now, the picture here, it's about a police detective who bungles a gangland murder case and now has to redeem himself. He does so by going undercover as a dock worker to find a mob ruler on the waterfront who's known only as Blackie Clegg, but whose true identity is unknown. So, from 1951, the mob. Let's roll the picture. You wanted something for around $150, Johnny. Yeah, but these look like samples. Would you like something for around $250? I'll tell you. I'd like something for around $500, but I only want to pay $150 for it. These, they look more like it. $685. How much you offer the police force? Why should I knock off anything just because you're a policeman? Thought you might want to try and bribe me. I'm always reading about cops being bribed. I've got more influential friends than you and the Boy Scouts. Oh, come on, Fred. Make me a deal. You know Mary you ought to cut the price in half. I've known Mary since she was eight years old, and the price is still 685 bucks. How do you sleep at night, Fred? Just fine, thanks. How much cash? How much you got? About 300. It's yours. Wrap it up. Stay back. All right, drop it. Don't turn. Just drop it. I'm Lieutenant Anderson, 21st Precinct. 
My badge is in my right pocket. Get it out. Toss it back here. Okay, Lieutenant. I'm Johnny D'Amico. Take the third to the sixth precinct. Who's the pigeon? Tony Rogers. He shot up one of my men about two hours ago. Hey, what's happening? You got a phone? Yeah. I'll call him, D'Amico. All right, get out of here. Go on, get out. What's happening? All right, get back. Get back. What is it? You too, nosy. Or did you shoot this guy? No, Lieutenant Henderson shot him. He's calling in. I'm Johnny D'Amico, 6th Precinct. Garrity, Bill Garrity. Is he... Yeah, he sure is. And he made good time. What's up? Just a small killing. Funny nothing came over the radio on this. What do you mean, nothing came over? How'd you get here? We were just cruising. Call it in. I'll be right back. 33T, OK7. 69, OK, but it's not in the file. Hey, what's going on out there? Where's the man just came in here to make a phone call? Uncle? Yeah, a big fella, French coat, black hair. Oh, him. He just walked in the front door and went out the back. Lieutenant Banks. Lieutenant Banks. Yeah. How many shooting on West 63rd? He just came in over the radio. What are you doing there? I saw the whole thing. Big fella shot a little fellow and I pulled a gun on him. In the best tradition. Well, he flashed the badge, said he was Lieutenant Henderson, 21st Precinct. Little fellow was Tony Rogers and he just killed a cop. I searched the dead guy. He was carrying identification Edward Jensen, 1911 Inman Avenue. What's that name again? Edward Jensen. Where is this Lieutenant Henderson? He jumped into a lunchroom before and I find out he went out the back door. Johnny, you're kidding. I know it sounds like a bonehead play, Lieutenant, but the badge he flashed was the McCoy and he was carrying a police revolver. Get down here right away, Johnny. Is it bad? Right away, Johnny. Okay. And you even hand him back his gun. Why don't you give him train fare? But I'm telling you, that badge was real. You couldn't fool me with a tin job. Sure, it was real. It was taken off the body of Lieutenant Miri by the guy who murdered him three hours before. I didn't hear about any killing. I was off duty. You know who Edward Jensen was? No. You should. Jensen was a principal witness in the grand jury investigation of the waterfront rackets. Lieutenant Miri was a special investigator assigned on that case. The guy with the badge? Your description is the same as Miri gave us just before he died. I should have gone fishing. I called the commissioner and the district attorney while you're on your way down. They want to see you tomorrow morning. Pretty upset? I would count on your pension. Well, the army's always waiting. I'll do what I can, Johnny. Thanks. Where are you going? I got a date with Mary. Not anymore. I've got an artist waiting to work with you. See if you can get something that looks like your pal. Well, that won't take long. I'll phone her. And I don't want you to leave here tonight. Why hang around? That's an order. We'll go to the commissioner's office together in the morning. Okay. Weight, approximately 160 pounds. Height, approximately 5 feet 11. This is going to be a big help. I'm sorry, Commissioner. It was the best I could do. It was dark and raining, and after he showed me the badge, I didn't pay too much attention to it. You should be back patrolling vacant lots. A man commits a murder right in front of your own eyes. You tip your hat, shiny shoes, and send him off with his hot little gun still in his hands. You're suspended for 60 days. Yes, sir. That's only for publication, however. Instead of actually suspending you, we're going to give you a chance to get yourself killed. We want this man awfully bad. And I'm stuck with you because you're the only one who knows anything about what he looks like. No record? No record, no pictures, no prints, no anything. Mary gave us the name Blackie Clegg. Our boys have been hearing the name around the waterfront the last couple of weeks. Sit down, D'Amico. Yes, sir. What do you know about this waterfront setup? Very little, sir. I'm not surprised at that. But anyway, your job is to bring in Blackie Clegg. I think we should brief him just for background, but Radford can handle the racket end. 
About three months ago, the union came to us and asked our help in getting rid of the racketeers who worked their way into the waterfront. Mary, who was killed last night in Radford here, were assigned to the case. How do the rackets work? They got a hundred angles. Kickbacks from everybody working on the docks. Highly organized thefts from loadings and unloadings that bring them in about 50 million a year. Contributions. I could go on for hours. We began getting witnesses from the truckmen, steamship lines, and the longshoremen. Enough to convene a grand jury and start presenting evidence. Then they evidently sent out some new boy to take over. Things began to tighten up, but we still had enough to go ahead. Jensen was our prize witness. And Mary was one of our best men. How far had Mary gotten? I don't know for sure. We were working separately. But pretty near the top, I guess. He scared somebody. This Blackie Clegg, he's the new boss? That's what Mary said. You don't have anything on him? We know someone who might be able to identify him. Who's that? You. How do I work? We'll get everything set up for you. You will be Tim Flynn, a middle-sized crook from New Orleans. We'll have the New Orleans police phony up a record for you in case anybody checks. What have I done? A few misdemeanors and a manslaughter rap. We'll arrange for you to fly to New Orleans tonight. Get aboard a boat, work your way back up here. It'll take about a week. Make sure you notice plenty on that boat. These boys probably check on anything they think looks suspicious. Yell for all the help you need and keep reporting in. Another man can pick up in case you're knocked off. That's a cheery thought. It's no stroll in the park. And don't forget, D'Amico... Clegg saw as much of you last night as you did of him. Already thought of that, Commissioner. Also thought of something else. There's another guy got a better look at him last night than I did. Who's that? The lunchroom proprietor. Won't be much help. We picked him up dead in an alley at 4 o'clock this morning. Clegg's a little gun happy, isn't he? Remember that when you're prowling around late at night. Yes, sir. Picture is that? Oh, that's old Heathcliff D'Amico. He's an uncle of mine. He operates a string of girdle factories at Pompton Lakes. Look, I'm not really suspended. Well, then why the story? Detective Mumbo Jumbo. Your friends will know that isn't your picture. I'm not expecting any trouble from my friends. It's late. I've got to get back. Wait a minute. Beautiful, Johnny. The budget must have groaned and cracked a little. I just sold some of my oil interest, and there it was. Oh, I love it. Good. Do I see you later tonight? No, Mary. As a matter of fact, maybe not for a couple of weeks. Why? Well, I have to go underground, you know, like gophers and communists. Something to do with the story in the paper? Yeah. Can't you tell me anything? I'd rather not. Don't worry. I won't. If you love me, you would. This is almost as nice as the ring you promised me when we were first engaged. And remember, lady, that's not just a present. That means that 685 bucks of you belongs to me from here on in. Really? Mm-hmm. Fred told me he gave it to you for $300. Mary, a successful marriage is based on a wife letting her husband lie a little. Now, let's not get started on the wrong foot. Yeah? Is this John D'Amico, 6th Precinct? Yeah, that's right. Ted Carpell of the Herald. I thought if you were going to be around for a while, I'd come over and have a talk with you. What about? I'd like to get a story. You going to be there? Yeah, sure, I'll be here. Okay, I'll be right over.
City desk, please. City desk. Let me speak to Ted Carpell. Who? Ted Carpell, he's a reporter. Well, not on this newspaper, he isn't. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. Who's this? Thanks. phony call. There'll be a couple of guys with guns at my place in a few minutes, probably from Blackie Clegg. Get a car over here right away and see if you can't squeeze some information out of them. Hold it, Johnny. Get a car out in front right away. Okay, Johnny. I'll stick around till they get here, then I'm off to the airport. But you'll hear from me next week. Right, Johnny. Board, Flynn, but if you ever try to get back again... Me try to get back on this turtle? I'd rather have typhoid. You've been a troublemaker the whole trip. Should have kept you in the break. I wouldn't have had to see so much of you. Get this straight. I'm putting the word out about you. I'll remember your face. I'll try to forget yours. Get off. Hey, you guys! You better drop that work and lay down a red carpet. You got a tough boy from New Orleans invading your town. Hey, who are these guys? Longshoremen, stupid. No kidding. I thought they were a bunch of stranded chorus boys. came in to admire the decorations. Three bucks a day. What's that include? Sheets on the bed. You got a register? Don't be funny. Hey, I take my stuff upstairs. This ain't the Waldorf, friend. How long did you work here before you found that out? Keep an eye on this. I'm going to have a drink. Any more orders, princess? Yeah, my name is Tim Flynn. When the mayor comes with my key to the city, ask him to join me in the orchid room. Creep. What'll it be? White wine and beer. Come again? White wine and beer. Mixed together? Oh, a glass of each. That beats me. I had a nut ask me once for a glass of gin and a candy bar. This is a new one. I know guys used to drink white wine and beer. Down in New Orleans. I spent some time there. Have a drink? Thanks. Beer, smoothie. My name's Clancy. 
Tim Flynn. All right. Yeah, well, that's a great town, New Orleans. I had a girl I once used to play the piano with her teeth. With her teeth? Yeah. Well, she had kind of long brown teeth. Sounds like some of the dogs I've run into. How long have you been away? She got in 20 minutes ago. Yeah, I was there when you got off the boat. Some of the boys were thinking about pleating your chin with a crack you made. Boy shouldn't be so sensitive. You check in this place? Yeah, how is it? When the tenement crowd goes slumming, they come here. Oh, it ain't that bad. I'd rather have a sleeping bag in a sewer. You gonna be around for a while, Clancy? Yeah, maybe why. Keep my drink warm for me. I want to get settled in my room. That's a howl calling it a room. Have a drink on me while you're waiting. White wine and beer. Don't let her flip you, Smoothie. I knew a guy used to drink vodka and goat milk. Bring me another beer over the table here, huh? Lieutenant Banks. Lieutenant Banks. Lieutenant, this is D'Amico. I checked into the Royal Hotel at 10th and Walton. And say, did you get anything out of those two guys you picked up at my apartment? No, I put a tail on them when we let them go. But they left town right away. Well, look, I'm applying for my work permit tomorrow. And I'll play it cagey and make sure I don't have any trouble getting it. Now, listen, Lieutenant. Put my calls on tape from now on. I might be in a hurry and won't be able to repeat. Oh, and another thing. Why did you have to pick New Orleans? I hate white wine and beer. So I laid it right on the line to this thing. I says, honey, if it's a millionaire you're after, you've been digging in the wrong pea patch. So get that champagne look out of your eye and finish your beer. How'd she take it? Well, she didn't. Next day, she headed for Canada with my cufflinks, my car, and a mink-dyed hamster coat I bought in Atlantic City. What are my chances of getting some work on the docks? You got a union card? Yeah, from New Orleans. Well, you might get a visitor's permit, but I doubt it. Couldn't you fix it? Might be worth something to me. Why? You hiding out? A little money usually fixes anything, Clancy. Not around here. What's so different about here? Well, this waterfront is tight as a two-bit collar. They don't like strangers too much. I'm just asking about a job. Maybe. You can't give me any help? Let's just say I won't give any help. I don't get it. Why all the mystery? Let's talk some more about women. I know a little chick from Detroit. Look, I need a job. You know, there's something funny about a guy that breaks his neck getting a job breaking his back. Maybe I like hard work. I thought you said you were Irish. All right, Clancy. I got in a little trouble in New Orleans. Nothing serious, but I want to lay low for a couple of months. They'll check on anything you say around here. Who'll check? Who are you talking about? Then I met this girl from Alabama. She was a muscle dancer in a charity bazaar. Buy another beer, I'll tell you all about her. Buy two beers, I'll give you her address. Doc gang number 12, report to Nerium, birth 145 at 8.45 a.m. Hey, Max, what do I see about a work permit? Over at the end window. Thanks. Ship gang number 14, report to Portis, birth 147 at 10.30 a.m. Yeah? I got a card in New Orleans. I want to get a visitor's permit. Funny guy. What's funny about it? I need a job. Try the government, buddy. We don't have anything here. Now, listen, Buster. Maybe you don't hear so good. I said there wasn't anything. We haven't issued a new permit for three months. Well, it's about time you started. Those are in good order. I'm in good standing. Hey, you heard him. Don't start any trouble. Get going. I said get going. Man number 50, report to Doc Gang number 12, Nerium, birth 145 at 8.45 a.m. Hey, you. You from New Orleans. Yeah? Ship Gang number 22, report to cashier. Forgot your book. Thanks for nothing. You must be half Irish and half congressman to get that permit so easy. A dollar a day paves the way. What happens now? Willie Alessandro breaks a leg. Yeah, what's that mean? You're just about to find out.
No need for you guys to hang around. You're not working today or any other day. What's the matter with them? They're troublemakers. They want a full day's pay without any kickback. All right, Marbleheads, now shut up and listen to me. We need 40 strong backs on this job, and I mean strong. Two days' work. Unload today and load tomorrow. Overtime tomorrow and after eight hours today. Now, we don't need any brains on this job, so dummy you that can't stand hard work, shove up! Makes you feel right at home, doesn't he? Now, I want guys what will cooperate. I'm speaking of cooperation. You all know Willie Alessandro who got his leg busted this morning. The fourth leg for Willie this week. Now, Willie's a good guy. He's got a wife and four kids. But now with a busted leg, Willie can't work. So when you come up here to get your tags, I'm asking all of you who want to work to kick in a little something into the pot we're getting up for Willie Alessandro. Don't let me in on trouble! Joe over here will be glad to help dummy that don't have the money. What's he mean, help? He lends you four bucks for Willie this morning. You give him back five when you get paid this afternoon. Oh, what a ten-cent racket. Well, it's only cigarette money for the boys, but it amounts to over 200000 a year. Who gets the money? What are you, kids? You want to work? Yeah, sure. Let's go. Don't forget poor Willie, or they'll ride you home in your face. Let's give Willie five bucks this time. He's had a lot of hard luck. You got a card? Yeah. Tim Flynn. You're new around here. Brand new. Where'd you come from? I'm a socialite. I'd like to try his hand at hard work. Who got you the book? The guy that told me to keep my mouth shut. What do you mean, told you to keep your mouth shut? That's what the man said. What man? That's what he told me to keep my mouth shut about. Was it Joe Castro? Maybe it was Joe Castro's boss. Take this over. Come on, Flynn. You know what you're talking about? All I know is I want to go to work. Castro's boss, huh? It's pretty rough work on the docks. You know how to run one of these? Sure, I ran one in the army. It's better work than wrestling boxes. Hey, Coolio. You better know what you're talking about. Flynn here's taking over your left today. You go on down and unload with the rest. What do you mean he's taking over? That's my job. Not anymore, it ain't. What do you think Shut you up. get off? You want to work, get on down there. If you don't, beat it. You and me are going to have a small talk later on. I'll be busy thinking of things to say. Come on, Flynn, I'll put you to work. Now go on, beat it. And let's have a full day's work for a full day's pay. Kind of a nice job you turned over to me. I don't know how you pulled it, brother, but I don't want to see you back here tomorrow. Better not look too hard, because here's where I'll be. Maybe you need a little smartening up. When I do, I'll get a smart boy to do it. <laughs> Lucky I didn't break your neck. You want some more, get up. You can tell your friend Castro I don't like being pushed out of a good job. I may have a few things to say to a few people. You better take your sorority sister home, boys. I think she's had a very hard day. So you end up your busy little day with a street brawl, huh? I was just working up an appetite. What's your angle, Flynn? Where do you get your drag? No drag. People like my personality. You ask a lot of questions, but you seem to know more answers than any of us. I don't know a thing. All I did was get myself a job and take care of some sorehead who tried to object. 
Could be. If you're afraid to be seen with me, move on down the bar. Oh, no, no, I'm not afraid, just curious. They don't pass out soft jobs down here without some reason. The guy asked me a silly question about a jerk named Castro. I never heard of him. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. So I gave him a silly answer about Castro's boss, and bingo, I'm in a featherbed job. Maybe you ought to try it yourself. No. No, I work hard, but I'm healthy. I'm poor, but I'm alive. More double talk. Maybe you'll wish it was. Why don't you buy another drink while your money's still some good to you? Hiya, Flynn. I got a little invitation to a party for you. RSVP. Sure, I'll go right home and change. This is sort of a come-as-you-are party. Get in. Have you got a girl for me? No, this is Dag. Do I know any of the people giving the party? You will. Will I like them? How could you help? They're a bunch of jolly good fellows. Aren't you going to blindfold me? You've been reading too many comic books. Get your hands off of me, sucker. Mister, you're a riot. We don't use the honor system here. Now, is this any way to dress for a party? Look at this, boss. A water pistol. Well, what do you know? It makes a noise. Let him go. Sit down. Who are you? The man said, sit up! Get some strong heart. Just sit still and answer questions. You've been shooting off your mouth for two days around here. Who told you to use my name in the docks? Oh, you must be Castro's boss. I'm Castro, and I don't have any boss. Not even a wife, Mr. Castro? We don't want you to entertain until later. Just take the lay off of me, Castro, or what? What's this all about? So I shot my mouth off around the docks. I needed a job. I heard somebody mention your name and I used it. All right, I'm sorry. Get me a beer. We're out of here, boys. Go get some. I'll want that gun when I leave. Sure, when you leave. I don't like fresh guys messing around my docks. Now, one way or another, you're going to answer a few questions. Make it easy on yourself. You've been gone a half an hour. I had to chase clear over to 18th Street to get some cold beer. How's old fun-loving Flynn? Open it. Flynn's okay. He's on the lam from New Orleans. 
Do you believe him? Yeah. He made a little mistake, but I don't think he'll do that again. Will you, Flynn? Not unless it's a mistake to take this guy apart. Gunner was just following orders. Gunner's gonna run into me one of these days without any help. I like this boy. He's got character. Have a beer. I'd rather get some sleep. Okay, Flynn. You can go. No hard feelings. Give him his gun. Sure. You must use that to keep flies out of your room. Hook me up sometime, Gunner. You're a laugh a minute, kid. Forget about tonight, Flynn. Okay. Well, it's all fixed. Clean up this room and patch up that hole. Oh, you must be worn out at night. Why well, work when gasoline will do it for you? It's nice of you to talk to us laborers. Just don't perspire on my machine, boy. See you later. Hey. You, Tim Flynn? Yeah. You live at the Royal Hotel? That's right. Okay, come on. What's the idea? You got a fight yesterday with a guy named Coolio. Fight? It was more like a wall. Don't tell me he called the cops. You seen him today? No. I don't wonder. He was murdered last night at 11.30. Shot with a 32 automatic. We found this in your room. One bullet fired. Come on. Don't start any trouble. You're the wrong town to try this, buddy. Come on. Let's have it. Have what? Don't get me sore. I don't want to waste any time on you. I'm ready to leave any time you are. Now, look, Flynn, you can make it easy or hard. Me, I don't care which way it is. Why'd you kill Culio? I didn't. You had a fight with him. Maybe got sore and came after you. Was it self-defense? I never saw the guy after the fight. Get up. All right, lean forward on your two forefingers. Hold it there. This won't be the most fun you've ever had. In a few minutes, you'll be yelling for help. Why don't you save yourself some trouble and talk now? I got nothing to say. Maybe you knew him before down in New Orleans. That's where you're from, isn't it? My name is Timothy Flynn, and I want a lawyer. You might be interested to know that we got orders from higher up to be pretty rough on you waterfront rats. I'd like to talk to you alone, Sergeant. Why alone? Don't you like my friends? Think I can tell you something might interest you? You bet you can. You're going to start right now. Alone, Sergeant. Not on your life. You don't get any breaks because you've been stepping on the wrong toes ever since you got in town. What do you mean? Castro? Never mind who I mean. We bother to check my gun against the bullet found in Culio's body. We will, as soon as we get your confession. I check it right now because they won't match up. I got pretty good information that they will. 
Next time you see your information, tell them I'm not hick enough to let somebody wander around town carrying my gun. What do you mean? I'm trying to tell you the gun and the bullet won't match. Send that gun to ballistics. I wouldn't want to spend your next few hours if you're lying. I'm not lying. And another thing, Binion. Tell your friends their frame was strictly Bush League. Shut up about my friends. Up on your fingers. We haven't even started with you. Here's the noon report from the precincts. What's up? Everything's pretty quiet. 15th picked up a man on that waterfront killing last night. Anybody we know? No, some out of town or from New Orleans. Come on now, you've had an hour of this. It ought to be enough. Why don't you wait for the ballistics report? I don't care anything about that. I want to hear what you got to say. So, it's beginning to get you. All right, straighten up. Let him alone. You're not going to get any place that way, Sergeant. Give me a little more time. Forget it. I'll take him down to headquarters with me. Now, wait a minute, Lieutenant. We made this pitch. I'll see you get full credit for it. Here's a ballistics report. Well? It's not the same gun. You still want credit, Sergeant? You better clean him up before I take him down and book him for having a gun without a permit. I hope you enjoyed the parlor tricks. Sorry, but I couldn't act too anxious to get you out of there. I'd put a tail on that Sergeant Binion who picked me up. He's tied in with a mob, whoever they are. You sure? Sure enough to want him followed. Nice work in ditching the murder gun. I'd have been a slow 12 years old to fall for that one. I fired a bullet from this gun so they wouldn't catch you on. What'd you do with the first gun? Mailed it to you. What about the killing? That was done by a character called Gunner. Why was Culio killed? He made a crack about doing some talking after our fight, so they figured on getting rid of him and me at the same time. Johnny, if you'd like us to put somebody else on this with you... No, 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 no. I'll pick up Gunner. Anyway, I feel I'm beginning to get someplace. Where? I want you to check on a guy called Thomas Clancy. Okay. Do you have anything on a Joe Castro? Not much. We figure he's about fifth man from the top. Yeah, well, I figure he's closer than that. What about Blackie Clay? I haven't even heard his name mentioned. Everybody's too scared. You know, if we ever snag that sergeant, I get ten minutes alone with him. If he's crooked, you can have ten days. One crummy, crooked cop, and he can smell up the whole force. When do you want to be released? Right now. I'm anxious to start working my way right back to that sergeant. Up and at him, Russell. Well, what do you know? I was just reading about you in the paper. I figured there was pop boys in you for the chair. I'm going in to get a drink. That should give you time enough to put back the stuff you probably stole from my room. There was nothing there worth stealing. Put it back anyway. On the house. Thanks. I guess Benyon and his boys had some fun with you. I'll get him alone sometime. That kind always travel in bunches. You hear a lot of stuff around the bar, don't you, Smithy? I don't listen very hard. Sure you do. What do you hear? Well, some of the boys say you were framed. I'm not very good at that. I want you to pass this along so it'll get back to the right places. I'm a little peeved with the boys that did it. Know who they are? Yeah, I know who they are, but I don't know where to find them. Do you ever sell information, Smoothie? Not me. It'd be worth five bucks. I could find out where I could run into a certain guy. Ask somebody else. Ten. It ain't healthy, Flynn. Twenty bucks, or do I go someplace else? Who do you want to know about? The guy they call Gunner. The college stuff. Anybody could have told you. He hangs out every night in a little club called the Black Kitten. It's on 18th. 20 bucks, please. You wouldn't cross me, Pop. 
I don't cross nobody. I bounce you around like a basketball. I gave it to you straight. Welcome back. Now, white wine and beer? <laughs> I mean, that just sounds ghastly. <laughs> but according to the movie here, that's apparently a New Orleans drink. Now, any of you viewers, you know, if you're from New Orleans or elsewhere in the elsewhere in Louisiana, you know, hit me down here in the comments. Let me know. You know, is this really a for real drink? <laughs> now, but did you see the scene with Charles Bronson? We got to see a younger Charles Bronson. You know, he was one of the dock workers. You know, in the crowd there at the docks, you know, he had a few lines. Now, this picture here was only his third screen appearance though he was still uncredited. But we also got to see a younger Ernest Borgnine. You know, he's the one playing Castro, you know, the tough guy. It seemed like Ernest Borgnine would get more fame and acclaim later in his career when he would play older roles. Now, for him, for Ernest Borgnine, he was born in Hampton, Connecticut, and he was the son of Italian immigrants. Now, when he was a small child, his parents separated, so he moved with his mother back to Italy, and he did spend part of his childhood over there. But eventually, his parents reconciled, and so he and his mother came back, and the family eventually resettled in New Haven, Connecticut. Now, after high school, he enlisted in the Navy, uh, served aboard a destroyer, and he was honorably discharged in October of 1941. <laughs> now, of course, it was just two months later, Pearl Harbor happened. So, he re-enlisted in the Navy again, and he served aboard an anti-sub ship for the duration of the war. And it was really good experience for what would eventually become what was probably his most famous role. He had the role of Lieutenant Commander Quentin McHale in the TV series McHale's Navy. It aired on ABC from 1962 to 1966. And, you know, really, he had quite a robust career in television and in cinema. Now, some of his best remembered films. He was in 1953's From Here to Eternity. He had the role of Fatso Judson. 1956's Jubal. 1967's The Dirty Dozen. And 1969's The Wild Bunch. You know, just to name a few, but of course the list goes on from there. <laughs> so, well, let's get back to the mob. My party tonight, Gunner. I heard you were out, Flynn. That smells mighty like a cop to me. Let's go across the street. I never argue with the man who's giving the party. Castro should have let me get you but good the other night. He's got more sense than you've got. Maybe neither one. 
I want to ask you a couple of questions about a friend of yours. Sure. Blackie Clegg. What do you want to know? Tied up in a construction job on 18th Street across from the Black Kitten. Hold it, Johnny. Get a car out in front right away. Okay, Johnny. Lieutenant, don't let anything out about his arrest. And whatever you do, don't let anybody spring him. If you do, I'll be dead ten minutes later. We'll keep him buried. Did you get anything on Clancy? We can't find a thing. Maybe he's using a phony name. Yeah, we'll put a tail on him. I'm going to sleep for 18 hours. Hey! Flip! Over here. I heard you applied for a permanent position at Leavenworth. I didn't qualify. Who sprung you? My mother. Your mother must get around the way you walk in and out of soft jobs and jails. If you're trying to pump me, you're going to have to do a lot better than that. I'm just trying to get the formula. They throw away the key on me if I get a traffic ticket. There's no formula. They just found out I didn't do it. Okay, don't get sore. You're too nosy. I don't be like that. I was just going to invite you to a party tonight. I need that like I need the plague. You don't like parties? I've been to a couple lately that are pretty rough. This might turn out that way, too. I've lined up two of the cutest gals you ever saw. You want to share them with me? Well, two are worse than none. Why pick on me? You've got a lot of other friends. Well, if getting your cute girl is picking on you, I've been taking an awful beating since I was 13. Who are the girls? Now, would you know any more if I gave you their names? They're women. Well, what do you want, free dishes? Well, I could use a little fun. What time? I'll meet you at Pine and 4th Street at 9.30. Hey, don't stand me up. I couldn't handle both of them. Clancy wants you to get him drunk. Play up to him. Get everything you can out of it. Who is he? Clancy didn't say. Just said he might be dangerous to him. What am I supposed to find out? Everything you can. What he's doing around the docks. What his connections are. Fine job to give to his sister. Why don't you do it? Because it's the worst job to give to his wife. You know how jealous Clancy is. Yeah. You gonna wear your wedding ring? No, thanks for reminding me. Here he is now. How are you, girls? Sorry to keep you waiting. This is Tim Flynn. Tim, this is Peggy, and that's Dora. She belongs to you. Now, suppose I like Peggy better. Well, wait a minute, pal. Oh, come on, Clancy. You're not going to get stuffy on me, are you? It's just that I got kind of a weakness for blondes. So have I. Yeah, but this is sort of my coming out party. Well, there's nothing the matter with Doris. No, of course not. You'll have fun. Oh, come on, Clancy. What difference does it make? You like Doris? And I think he's kind of cute. Why can't he like Doris? Why can't somebody? Oh, sit down, Clancy. We'll have a real good time, honey. Yeah, sure. Tell me all about yourself, Tim. Oh, I come from an ordinary, everyday family. My mother was an oil heiress. My father was a Zeppelin pilot. Did they ever marry? It's been awfully dry sitting here waiting for you. Yeah, sure. Let's have some drinks. Yes, sir. What'll it be? Who's buying? I am. Cheap bourbon and plain water. Make it four. Oh, it's on the program tonight. Well, I thought we might have a few drinks and go up to your place. Trying to save money again? We'll bring a bottle. What do you say, Tim? You lead, I'll follow. You see what nice things he says, Clancy? You and I are going to get along fine. That thought has already crossed my mind. 
Well, say something to me. Hmm? Oh, uh, how you been? Why did you loosen up tonight? Let's take a cab. Listen, the streetcar was good enough for my grandfather. Well, it's not good enough for me. How are we going to eat? Eat? What's that? That's something people who don't drink do. Come on, let's take a cab. She acted like she knew you. I wish she did. Things must be slow at the hospital. Tell me anything about yourself. Why should I talk about me when I got a pretty little thing like you around? Are you in the rackets, Timmy? Let's talk about world affairs. Clancy is. Makes a lot of money. You ought to get in on it. Maybe you ought to talk to Clancy about getting me in. You're kidding me. You've probably got a better deal of your own, haven't you? What color are your eyes? Can't you tell? Bourbon blue. Where are old Clancy and Doris? They're in the kitchen. Leave them alone. You're not just an ordinary longshoreman, are you, Timmy? No. What are you? Thirsty. You're cute. You two met? Clancy, my boy, you can think of the most delightful ways to pass the time of night. I'm gonna come to all your parties from now on. Look, run back to your mix master and cook up a few more of these. Here, honey. Don't let me outdistance you. I'm with you every step. Not much stamina, has he? We got what we wanted. Anyway, I was tired of him pulling you around. Jealous. <laughs> you can say that again. He's really out. He'll be all right in the morning. Find out? No, I'm happy you're just guessing. Where's Gunner? Who? You know who I mean. If you mean that dim bulb who pushed me around. Where is he? How should I know? That's your problem. You haven't seen him? No. How come this was in your bureau drawer? Well, you certainly tripped me up there, didn't you? I didn't come up here to trade jokes with you. Now, come on, where is he? I told you I didn't like people who pushed me around. You killed him? He's not around, is he? You ought to be glad it wasn't you after that two-bit frame you tried to pull. A real tough guy, aren't you? With my hangover? No. Come on, get up. I don't want it. Okay, sucker. Take it right here. You make a lot of noise. Nobody in this dump will care about that. Yeah, you got a point there. What'd you do with Gunner's body? I floated it down the sewer. I thought so. All right, get moving. Now that he's gone, I'd like to apply for Gunner's job with your organization. I said get going. I'd be a good boy for you, Castro. My cars in the back will use those stairs. Where are we going? It won't matter to you. 
I'd fit into your gang perfectly. I could maim and disfigure people for you and shoot up the ones you don't like. Get going. I think you're making a big mistake, Castro. I'm no good to you dead. He must have bumped his head on something. Yeah. It's upstairs to your right. Come on, give me a hand. We'll get him back to your room. You must be part Marine to turn up in the nick of time like this. I've been listening outside your door. Lucky I did before I knocked, huh? The final drink you gave me last night must have been radioactive. Yeah, it's an invention of my own. I call that old bikini. I'm sorry about last night, D'Amico. Come on, come on, D'Amico. Let's stop playing footsie with each other. You're a cop working out of the 6th Precinct in the Blackie Clegg business. I don't try anything. I'm pretty quick with a blackjack. Maybe we'll find out. Why? I'm on your side. Yeah? Who are you? Like they say on those corny television programs, special investigator. Where's your beard? <laughs> I rigged it up to get your prints off one of those glasses last night and sent them through to Washington. Imagine my surprise when you turned out to be a flatfoot. Mm. Why don't they tell us these things? We go around gumshoeing after each other. Hey, Clancy. Haven't had a chance to send your prints in yet. I've had a guy tailing you for two days. I know. That's why I wanted to find out a few things. Did you have to slug me with that poison to do it? No. That was just to teach you not to play around with my wife. Your what? The plan was for my sister Doris to do your entertaining, but you had to crumb things up and pick my wife. You're lucky I didn't tear your arm off. We must do that again real soon. Yeah, that's what Peggy said this morning. What are you working on down here? A phony insurance swindle. The Alta Indemnity Company. They took about half a million. Have you heard of them, huh? No. It was worked by a gang of four. We got them all except the big boy, a fellow named Hummert. You got a line on him? Well, that's not him on the bed. I'll turn in my Dick Tracy badge. How'd you track him down? By every scientific device known to modern crime investigators. And the fact that a stool pigeon told us where he was. Why didn't you close in sooner? I couldn't find him. Only recently learned he was using the name Castro, so when I heard you drop his name at the dock, I figured you'd lead me to him sooner or later. What do you know about Blackie Clegg, Clancy? Can't give you a bit of help. I've heard his name a couple of times, that's about all. You gonna keep working around here? No, oh, not me. That's the chump we're after. I'm going to take him in and then devote a month to patching up my shattered marriage. I'll put in a call for the boys to come and pick him up. That's great. Why don't you just shoot me yourself and save Castro's gang the trouble? You got any ideas? I'll keep it quiet and give me as much time as you can. How am I going to get him out of here? Castro's got a car in the back. Use that. You should have taken up my offer, Castro. Sure you don't need any help? If I do, I better go back to jerking sodas. Sweat him a little, see if you can't get some information for me. You won't get anything. We'll try real hard. I'll turn everything I get over to your boss. Don't drink any loaded drinks. Give my love to your wife. to see you. What about? How should I know? Maybe he's buying. Then what are you doing here? I'll be off duty at 8 o'clock, Flynn. Congratulations. 
There's a man who wants to see you. That shouldn't be too hard. I'm easily around here. He's too big a man for that. He wants me to bring you to him. Well, maybe I don't want to go. Oh, come on, Flynn. It means 20 bucks for me if I deliver you. Then you could at least offer to split with me. Well, there's 10,000 in it for you. Straight whiskey smoothie. Who is the guy? He'll tell you when he sees you. Where do I meet you? Right here. My car's across the street in the gas station. I'm going upstairs and get some sleep. If I'm not down here by 7, send Russell up to bang on the door. Are you sure you weren't followed? Please. What's so important? I'm making a command appearance in front of one of the big boys tonight. Who? Maybe the jackpot. I don't know. Where do you see him? The bartender at my rest home is driving me over. What about this bartender? Well, he says he's a go-between for 20 bucks. I wouldn't doubt it. Could we get to his car? It's in a gas station across the street from the hotel. How much time do we have? A mm, couple of hours. We'll put a transmitter in his car. Why? You may let something drop. In case anything happens to you, we'd like to know what it is. And we'll put a tail on you. Look, if they catch you on, we're back at the beginning. They won't. We'll use a fluorescent marker can. All right, just don't follow too close. I'll give you about ten minutes. You know, I got a hunch this is it. Be careful. Yeah, sure, I'll carry real bullets in my gun. Hey, Smoothie. You got a flat on the right rear of your car. It was all right this morning. Probably a slow leak. You want me to fix it? Got to use in about 40 minutes. Uh, put on the spare. Okay. Smoothie, couple of beers. got 40 minutes. I think we can make it. You better change that tire in case he decides to check. Paul, you handle the marker can under the right rear fender. Connect it to the ignition switch. Talbot, you and I work on the transmitter. We'll put it under the floorboard and the mic goes under the glove compartment. Okay, disconnect it. Hand me that ultraviolet lamp. Let's go. down there? Ready here. Turn on the ignition switch and I'll see if it works. Here it goes. Shut it off. All set. You'd better hurry up. Okay. 
ready to contact mobile units, Lieutenant. Mobile unit two. Mobile unit two. This is mobile two. Keep cruising and be ready to jump in with a fix anytime I ask you. Right. That goes for you too, mobile three. Okay, Lieutenant. Tune your antenna. Antenna tuned. That should do it. Lieutenant Banks should be receiving us now. They made it. Here they come. Thanks, Moody. I'll put it on your bill. All right, Tom. Listen. We wait ten minutes. Trust a bartender to know all the right people. You pick up a lot of things on a job like that. You mentioned something about $10,000. Let's dwell on that for a minute. Well, this man has a job for you. He likes the way you work. How does he know about me? He checked on your record in New Orleans. What work of mine does he admire? The way you took care of Gunner after he framed you. Who said I took care of him? Didn't you? Smoothie. It couldn't be that you're a cop, could it? No, it couldn't. I didn't take care of anybody. Have it your way. He's not around anymore, that's all I know. All right, let's go. Hitch off to Violet Light. There it is. Tell me about this man. He wants to see you. Is he really big? The biggest. What does he want me to do? Kill a cop. Is that all? Well, that's why it's worth 10,000 bucks. Just any cop, or does he have someone in mind? We have someone in mind. We? Well, as you said, a bartender knows all the right people. Circle around. Cut on down the way we were going and hurry up. Dumb crummy lot. Pull over to the curb. Mobile units two and three report in. Mobile unit two at 63rd and Downing Streets. 
Mobile Unit 3 at Sycamore and Langley. All right, stay where you are. We'll use that as a baseline. I'll triangulate it from here. As soon as they get where they're going, give me their bearings from your position. Is there anything else you want to tell me? You'll find out everything you need to know when we get there. Are you receiving them all right? Loud and clear. Same here. All right, draw your baseline. Come on, this is it. Why couldn't we meet him in a more lighted spot? This is the back door of the house. We'll go up to his apartment. Answer me one question, Smoothie. This guy Blackie Clegg. Where'd you hear that name? Around the docks. The boys say he runs things. The boys are right, but they shouldn't talk so much. Come on. Mobile units two and three. They're at their destination. Report on your bearings. This is Mobile Unit 2. Our bearing is 74 degrees. This is Mobile Unit 3. Our bearing is... I guess you two know each other. Yeah, I guess we do. How are you, Flynn? I'm not in the mood for any finger exercises, Binion. It's no fun, is it? Glad you're going to be with us, Flynn. I don't get it. Is he Blackie Clegg? Are you kidding? Binion runs errands around here. Sit down. Where's Clegg, then? He'll show up in a minute. Maybe I ought to give you a rundown first. On what? This job he wants done. That is, if you're interested. Well, that depends. Knocking off cops is a tricky pastime. They take a bullet just like anyone else. Yeah, but more people seem to resent it. Well, $10,000 isn't exactly uh, starvation wages. No, you can buy a lot of smiles with it. Well, this won't be tough at all. There's the boy we want. He doesn't look impossible. It's a deal, then? No, I want to talk to the man who wants it done. He can hear us. I want that to work both ways. Well, I can make the deal for him. No, not for me. I'll deal with the chairman of the board or nobody. All right. Fix yourself a drink and I'll get him. Thanks. In the vicinity of 68th and Charleston, Lieutenant. Mobile units, this is Lieutenant Banks. They're near 68th and Charleston. Let's get that whole area sealed off. Watch for his car. It's a 46 Ford Coupe, license number 7X8576. Come on in, Flynn. Meet Blackie Clay. must be kind of slow. I should have figured this, Smoothie. Why should you have figured it? A lot of smarter people than you, haven't? It's a little corny, but it works. You don't have any more tricks, do you? A few.
I haven't said I was in yet. You don't have to. You're in whether you like it or not. Oh, I see. You wanted to talk to Blackie Clegg. All right, you're doing it. But that automatically puts you on salary. Okay by me. That's half the ten grand. You get the rest when that cop turns up gone. Tell me all about this cop. He's been hiding out. I think we'll find out where he is tonight. Oh. Come on, I'll show you. Stubborn. What does she say? She hasn't seen him for a couple weeks. Who is she? The cop's girlfriend. How'd you find her? Why? I think I've seen her someplace before. Where? Just let me make sure it's the right girl. She seems to know you. She ought to. I was in a party with her last night. A party? Yeah, you know that fella Clancy I'm always drinking with at the bar? I know. He invited me to a party last night. There was a couple of girls. She was one of them. Clancy? He doesn't look like the picture in the paper. But if that picture's a phony, Clancy could be to make home. What do you got to say now, honey? I don't know what you're talking about. Let's get this straight, miss. We're going to find out where your boyfriend is. If he's going under the name of Clancy now... Tell us, and we'll drive you right back to the hospital. I don't know anything about any Clancy. He's lying. You're dealing with Blackie Clegg, girl. You better tell him what you know. Maybe she's forgotten. Maybe I can help her remember. We'll go back and have a drink. Let us know as soon as you get anything. Let me talk to her. She wouldn't understand you nearly as well as she would him. He's very experienced in this sort of thing. Well, honey, I'm afraid you're going to get mussed up a little more. Have you gone nuts? Don't try anything, Smoothie. I was tailed here. Are you a cop, Flynn? Without a wig to my name. You must be my friend, D'Amico. Yeah, you must have a crystal ball. You were kind of stupid to kick out that light. It won't matter. It already has. I've got the girl, D'Amico. And I'm going to back out the door. You'll hit her if you shoot at me. It won't do you any good, Smoothie. There's cops all over the block. Just remember what you'll be shooting at. How many others are in there? I don't know. I think I got two of them. Let's go. Be careful. Mary's upstairs. Who? Mary. Wait here. The Sergeant Benyon came and got me at the hospital. He told me that Johnny D'Amico had been hurt and he wanted to see me. I didn't have any reason to suspect anything because he showed me his badge. All right, Mary. Let's get into the hospital. Well, Colin, put this girl in the car and take her to Harbor Hospital. Yes, sir. Don't leave her until you're sure she's all right. Come on, Mary. Lieutenant, we got that guy out of the car. Do you want to see him? Bring him in. Yes, sir. I'll be over as soon as I'm through here. Got some awful good scotch. We'll look it over after we talk to him. Here 
he is, Lieutenant. That's not him. This is the guy who was in the car. Where is he, Binion? I don't know. I just heard some shots and I tried to get away. Tommy! You promised me ten minutes alone with him. Listen to me, Binion. Every guy on the force is going to take the rap because you got big and greedy. I'd like to do some work on your fingers. This office safe. There's a door goes out the back. Check precincts 10 and 12, Lieutenant. Still no lead on Blackie Clegg. He'll never get out of town. We've got every bridge, tunnel, and road plugged. Maybe he doesn't want to get out of town. And we'll pick him up. This guy's no schoolboy. That back door through the safe proved that. You sure you hit him? There was blood on the floor, wasn't there? We'll get him. He'll have to go to somebody for help. Maybe. But remember, he can turn up as a redhead or a blonde, anything he wants. Here's the report from Washington on those prints we picked up in his office. No record. You'd better get us some sleep, Johnny, but don't go near your apartment. What about Mary? I got men all around the hospital. I'll go over there, then come back here and sleep. Take a car. Thanks. How's it going, Joe? Ah, uh, time flies like a rock. I'm supposed to be looking for some bald-headed guy who wouldn't be dumb enough to show up. If you knew as much about that guy as I did, you keep your holster on button. Nurse, where have you got Mary Kiernan tied down? Room 306. Thanks. Nurse. I want the patient in room 309 disturbed. He's only in for a medical checkup. Yes, doctor. Patient in room 309 is not to be disturbed. You were right. He just came in. What about the ambulance? It's at the back entrance. I'm taking an awful chance. I'm paying an awful price. I had no idea that was the type of work you did for a living. Last night was pretty quiet. Gets downright exciting at times. Supposing you hadn't turned up. But I did. I don't have to tell you to keep quiet, D'Amico. Make any noise and she gets it first. Stand up. Turn around. Open your coat. Now you take his gun and put it on the bed. Don't stall. Don't reach for the bell or knock anything over. Do what he tells you, Mary. Back to the bed. Didn't I wing you last night? Just a scratch. We got cops around this place like Fort Knox. They're watching for me to break in, not out. Don't make a false move, D'Amico. Tell them to come in. Come in. Only take a minute. Let's see how you're getting along. I think you need some more sedation. I'll go get it, and then the visitors have to leave. We'll wait until she comes back before we go on with our business. What business is there? I don't like to be made out of sucker. Besides that, you two can identify me too easily. How do you figure on getting out of the hospital? The way I came in, an ambulance. You don't miss a trick, do you? That's how I stay alive. I was in the safe when you told them to take her to the hospital. 
that you'd come to see her. I don't think we'll wait for the nurse. Toss me a pillow. Go on over and stand beside him. Something was funny as soon as that nurse came in. She's one of our best cops. Didn't she look all right? She used her thumb to feel my pulse. No nurse would ever do that. She did all right. Lieutenant, what do you think my chances are of getting a promotion out of this? No. Well, I thought with the added expense of getting married, no. Well, very lucky for me, I have an income of my own. Why did you get that? Tilting pinball machine. You got that from Clegg and it belongs to the city. Timmy! I'd just like to see how you're going to talk your way out of this. Welcome back. You know, old Johnny here, Broderick Crawford, you know, it's a funny thing. You know, he wore that nice suit, but in many of these scenes, like, he would wear it in such a disheveled way, <laughs> almost like he was deliberately slovenly with it at times. But we do see here that Blackie Clegg was really Smoothie the bartender the whole time. And if you think about it, it was a perfect cover, you know, to have such a, an incognito position, you know, to hide his real identity, you know, as a mob boss. And speaking of the mob, the, uh, the car the mob was driving around there, that was a 1937 Packard 12 formal sedan. It was so named because it had a V12 engine, 473 cubic inches, uh, which basically equates to 7.8 liters. You know, that car in excellent condition today uh, would easily fetch well over six figures at an auction. Now, Broderick Crawford, you know, the one playing Johnny D'Amico, he was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and he was the son of a vaudevillian family. His parents and grandparents were all in vaudeville. In fact, his mom, uh, a little later in her career, she even had some appearances in film, uh, comedies and musicals. Uh, a couple of them were Top Hat and Swing Time. Now, for Broderick, his best remembered TV role, he had the role of Dan Matthews in Highway Patrol. Uh, it aired from 1955 to 1959. And he also had the role of Dr. Peter Goldstone, uh, and that was in the TV series The Interns. It aired on CBS from 1970 to 1971. Now, for his films, his best remembered, far and away, 1949's All the King's Men. He had the role of Willie Stark, and for that role, he won the Academy Award for Best Actor. And some of his other notables, he was in The Real Glory, Black Angel, uh, he was in that with Dan Duryea and, Ju and uh, June Vincent. Uh, I brought you that one some time back. Larceny Incorporated with Edward G. Robinson and Jane Wyman. And of course, you know, the beat goes on, you know, it it's quite a list. Now, remember, if you like old movies like this, click on the subscribe button. You'll be notified of future releases up here in the notification bell. And you can always just type Full Moon Matinee in the search bar, 
or just click on the full moon matinee icon down here and you can find all of the prior releases. And, as always, I thank you for spending the evening with Full Moon Matinee. Stay with us as we continue our further investigations into the long-lost evidence of Hollywood. Until next time.